All right, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back, VCTers. So happy to have you with us again for our last summer virtual college tour. So stay tuned um, for, for more to come, possibly in fall. Um, but for those of you who have joined us um, for our previous tours, we appreciate you. Welcome back. And for those of you who are new, so happy to have you and know that there's more to come um, in the future. So for today, we're super excited. We are doing um, Santa Clara University, the University of Northern Colorado, and Howard University. My name is Chevy, and I am the director of the College Place in Colorado. Also with us, we have uh, Tamika from the College Place Alexandria in Virginia. Um, I see we have Miss Jan Smith on the line from the College Place uh, Virginia on the Richmond side. And also presenting today, we have uh, Miss Monique from Northern California. So we are happy to have you. Um, a little bit about ECMC and the College Place for those of you who are new here. Um, we are a nonprofit that provides pre, uh, free college access uh, planning services to those of you who are in our states. So as I mentioned, I'm in Colorado. Uh, Tamika and Jan are in Alexandria in Richmond, Virginia. And then we have Monique in California. But we also have college places in Oregon, uh, Connecticut, Minnesota, and I think that's it. What am I missing? I think that's all of them. So yeah, Oregon, Virginia, two in Virginia, um, Minnesota, uh, and California. So we are so happy to have you. We are going to get started today with the University um, of Northern Colorado. So do enjoy, and I will give just a little bit of information after the, after the presentation, um, and then we'll give you guys some time a little bit later to ask questions. Enjoy. Go ahead, Tamika. Commons is UNC's Welcome Center for future students, current students, and alumni. The building houses the Office of Admissions, the Pi Cafe, a multi-purpose auditorium, an art gallery, large open areas where students can hang out and study, and a 600-seat performance hall for UNC's renowned performing arts programs. 
Campus Commons also houses Bear Central, where students can take care of financial aid, registration, and student billing needs all in one place. Want to join a club or activity? The University Center, or the UC as students call it, is the place to go. It's centrally located on campus, and it's where you'll find the UNC Bookstore and Fan Shop, Computer Labs, Wells Fargo Bank, Student Activities, Career Services, and the Center for International Education. A variety of student activities and student services are also located within the UC. If you're hungry, you can stop by the UC Food Court, Einstein Brothers Bagels, Subway, Sushi with Gusto, or the Munchie Mart. Two of our four cultural centers, the Native American Student Services, NAS, and Asian Pacific American Student Services, APAS, are both located in the Cole House. All of our cultural centers offer academic and social support for all students and provide them with a place to relax with friends, watch TV, study, and cook their favorite foods. The Marcus Garvey Center for Black Cultural Education is located in the Davis House. This cultural center also provides personal and academic support, as well as opportunities for professional development. You can hang out in the lounge, study in the resource room, or rent out the conference room. If you get a chance, you should stop by to see their amazing collection of art and artifacts. All of our cultural centers serve as a source of cultural education for the campus by hosting popular events, programs, and celebrations throughout the year. In addition to our cultural centers, our Gender and Sexuality Resource Center is located in a campus-owned house near the University Center. The GSRC advocates and provides a sense of belonging for students with marginalized identities, as well as educating the wider campus community. Every floor in Snyder has spacious lounges overlooking the Snyder Green. Snyder is one of the six residence halls that are a part of the Central Coalition, which have several rooms especially designed for ADA accessibility. These residence halls offer traditional style living, which includes community kitchens and bathrooms. If you live on campus, you can experience living in a residential learning community that can provide additional academic support, faculty and staff interaction, and the chance to explore academic themes beyond the classroom. These communities are separated into various categories to best fit your interests and area of study. Toby Kendall is where you'll find the dining hall for Central Campus and the offices of Housing and Residential Education and Dining Services. Students can sit and enjoy their meal in the marketplace atmosphere or grab a bite to go with the gourmet to go or bear on the run options at Toby Kendall Hall. The Ben Nighthorse Campbell Center is home to the University of Northern Colorado Cancer Rehabilitation Center, a front runner in exercise based cancer rehab. At the center, students and healthcare professionals alike receive training in cancer rehabilitation and participate in research to better help people recover from cancer and treatments. More than 1,000 cancer survivors have been served by the UNC Cancer Rehabilitation Center. Residence Row, named after four former university presidents, are residence halls that offer sweet style living. This community consists of Lujan, Bond, Dickinson, and Brown Halls, and houses over 170 students. The oldest silver maple tree in Weld County marks a favorite study spot just south of President's Row. The Arts Annex serves the School of Art and Design, which is under the College of Performing and Visual Arts. Most of the classes in the Arts Annex involve 3D art, including ceramics, sculpting, metalsmithing, and jewelry. The Arts Annex serves as a great resource in addition to the main School of Art and Design housed in Guggenheim Hall. Rotobush Cottage is designed to provide a sense of place for our veteran and military students. Students can use it as a lounge or study space or go there for benefits processing and campus advocacy. UNC maintains a full-time veteran services office for the convenience of veterans, military members, and their dependents.
Veteran Services is designed to be a central office for veteran benefits and support services. Guggenheim Hall was built as a gift from the former U.S. Senator Simon Guggenheim. Many of UNC's visual arts classes are held in this building. While you're here, you can also visit the Mariani Gallery for a variety of artworks and exhibits. Kepner Hall is home to the Monfort College of Business, which has received national and international recognition for its programs. MCB students regularly win business ethics competitions, and many receive job offers before they graduate. The Association to Advance Collegiate Schools of Business, AACSB International, awards accreditation to the top business schools worldwide, and MCB is among the elite schools accredited in both business administration and accounting. Kepner Hall hosts the Million Dollar Technology Education Center, several computer labs, a finance trading room, an applied networking lab, a cyber cafe, and smart classrooms. Carter Hall, UNC's library until 1944, is now the university's administration building and the oldest building on campus. You can find the president's office, graduate school, university provost, and several other offices within Carter Hall. The Howard M. Skinner Music Library, named after a longtime dean of the College of Performing and Visual Arts, holds music scores, books, periodicals and recordings, plus additional computers for student use and an instruction lab. The Skinner Music Library specializes in support of the School of Music and Musical Theater programs. Original designed as UNC's athletic building in 1928, Gunter Hall now has classrooms and offices for the College of Natural and Health Sciences. The Speech Language Pathology and Audiology Clinic is located in Gunter Hall, providing services to the community by graduate students under the supervision of certified faculty and staff. Our state-of-the-art nursing labs are also housed in Gunter. The Women's Resource Center and Stryker Institute for Leadership Development are located in Scott Wilcoxon Hall. The center provides a welcoming environment, an open forum for discussion of issues important to women, activists, and leadership opportunities. Ross Hall is home to many biology, chemistry, earth sciences, physics, mathematical sciences, English, and history programs. Several of our state-of-the-art multimedia classrooms and high-tech labs are also located here, in addition to a mathematics tutoring center and a writing center. UNC students in the STEM programs, even as undergraduates, get experience researching alongside professors and professionals in the field. Students have researched cancer treatment, studied meteorology using the National Science Foundation funded Doppler on Wheels, partnered with NASA, and gone on to work in cyber defense, tech startups, and more. McKee Hall is home to the College of Education and Behavioral Sciences, as well as future psychologists, educational leaders, and counselors. The Colorado Legislature has designated UNC the premier institution for teacher education. More than one in five of Colorado's Teacher of the Year award winners are UNC alumni, so they've spent many hours in this hall. Michener Library, named after famed Pulitzer Prize author and former UNC student and faculty member James A. Michener, contains more than 17 miles of shelves filled with books, periodicals, government publications, maps, and DVDs. Students have access to computers, latest online journals, and digital collections. The library has quiet places to study and do research, and a coffee corner that serves food and beverages. Local and national art is displayed in the Mary Michener Art Gallery. In addition to the library, the Michener Building houses classrooms, academic support and advising, disability support services, Center for Honors, Scholars and Leadership, and Center for Human Enrichment.
Candelaria Hall is home to the majority of programs within the College of Humanities and Social Sciences, including Africana Studies, Anthropology, Criminal Justice, Economics, Geography, Hispanic Studies, Foreign Languages, and Sociology. A beautiful mural depicting the life of Martin Candelaria, the building's namesake, decorates the main staircases. The Judy Farr Center is home to the Division of Development and Alumni Relations, as well as the UNC Foundation. Each year, the Alumni Association adds more than 2,000 graduates to the Bear Network and currently serves more than 130,000 living alumni in Colorado and around the globe. Membership in the association is free and affords alumni with a myriad of benefits and opportunities. The Cesar Chavez Cultural Center is located in the Patton House and offers students who identify with the Latino and Latina community support to ensure their academic and social success in college. The center provides a computer lab, study room, and resource room that provides space for conferences and holds several types of publications, videos, and scholarship and employment information. Nottingham Field is UNC's home football stadium and accommodates 8,500 spectators and fans. As a UNC student, you get into all home sporting events for free. Nottingham Field is also where you'll walk if you graduate in the spring. Bank of Colorado Arena and Butler Hancock Athletic Center house UNC's intercollegiate athletic offices, athletic training room, and a strength and conditioning center. Inside is an arena that holds 2,700 spectators for athletic and other campus events. If you're a fan of disc golf, you might be interested to know that our public nine-hole course begins near Butler Hancock. The Campus Recreation Center contains three multi-purpose gyms, two group fitness rooms, weightlifting and cardiovascular equipment, and two racquetball courts. You also get access to the 31-foot climbing wall, the suspended track, and UNC's indoor swimming pool. The Gear Shop is a place for students to check out outdoor gear and equipment free of charge. Available gear includes tents, other camping and backpacking supplies, snowshoes, snowboards, kayaks, cruiser and mountain bicycles, and more. Also located in the Gear Shop is UNC's Outdoor Pursuits program. Outdoor Pursuits offers college price trips that cover costs that often include the equipment, any fees associated with admissions to the destination, transportation, lodging, and food. They also offer various workshops and outdoor education. At 13 stories tall, Turner provides a place to call home for 330 students. Most residence halls have study areas, conference rooms, fully equipped kitchens, laundry rooms, and lounge areas. Turner Hall has single bedrooms within suites where students share a living room, vanity, and bathroom. Harrison Hall is home to more than 500 UNC students. Harrison has suite-style rooms as well as lounges located on each floor that are great for studying or hanging out with friends. You can feel safe knowing that all residence hall exterior doors are locked and require a student ID card to swipe for entrance. Harrison Hall, as well as Lawrenson Hall, remains open during the winter and spring breaks. Holmes Dining Hall serves as a dining room for the West Campus. At UNC, professional chefs prepare delicious meals every day. You can sit and enjoy a meal with a friend, or if you are in a hurry, use the options Gourmet to Go and Bear on the Run. Students who have special diets or food allergies can enjoy here meals prepared by our chefs with advice from registered dietitians. 
At 17 stories, Lawrence and Hall is the tallest building between Denver, Colorado and Cheyenne, Wyoming. Students have a fun residential experience living in the apartment style environment of Lawrenson and enjoy the five patios with amazing views. Lawrenson Hall, as well as Harrison Hall, remains open during the winter and spring breaks. These two halls are the newest residence halls on campus. Together, they hold more than 700 students in suite style living. There are a variety of social spaces, lounges, and unique family rooms for each hall. Students also have the chance to interact with faculty outside the classroom with UNC's Faculty in Residence program, where faculty live in residence halls and sponsor both social and academic opportunities for students living on campus. Downtown Greeley is full of fun places to hang and great places to enjoy yourself. Greeley has many restaurants and shops downtown, including Stuffed Burger, Batter Up Cakes, Rio, and Moody's Grill. The downtown area has a way of creating a big city feel within a smaller area with all the various places to go. The Moxie Theater is a unique venue for local bands and traveling artists. The Crest Cinema is always showing films in the genre of indie, historic, or classic. You have the ability to order food and have it delivered right to your seat during the movie as well. Lincoln Park offers a place to relax and enjoy our 320 days of sunshine that we receive around the year. Our shops downtown give you a boutique atmosphere with a lively environment. So, if you are looking for a place to have a relaxing, enjoyable, and unique time, downtown Greeley is the spot to be. Fantastic. Thanks, Tamika. So, as you guys can see, a cute little quaint um, campus that was founded in 1889, so it's been around for a long time. Um, and as she stated, it's located in Greeley, Colorado, which is tucked right between the Rocky Mountains and the Plains here. Um, UNC is a public doctoral research university um, with over 100 undergraduate uh, programs and over 120 um, graduate programs. So very cool. And, and that last um, housing unit that they showed to you where it said it had faculty and students. It's really beautiful inside. I wish they had pictures to, to show you, but they're like real apartments. It's, it's crazy. But um, for those of you who are interested or thinking about the University of Northern Colorado, um, a little bit geographically about how far it is. If you're in Colorado, it's only about an hour and a half, two hours away from Denver. Um, and if you're coming from out of state, it's only about an hour drive away from the airport. So it's not bad at all, which makes it very convenient for you to be able to travel into the city. We have lots of students that come down. We have lots of students that go up um, to go hang out and visit um, in, in Greeley. So not too much travel time there. Uh, tuition wise, so for in-state tuition, um, UNC is a school that has uh, a variable tuition rate based on how many credits you're taking. Um, so on average for full-time students, if you are in-state, you'd be looking at about $4,800 to about $6,400 um, per, ac per academic uh, semester. And then if you are out of state, you'd be looking at about $10,000 thousand seven hundred dollars to about fourteen thousand six hundred dollars and when I say full-time that's kind of based on about 12 credits all the way up to about 20 credits so um, depending on how many credits you would fall somewhere in there now that does not include housing um, so if you need to stay in housing housing ranges um, from about fifty two hundred dollars um, to sixty eight hundred dollars per academic year so that's not per semester that's actually per academic year um, and then the meal Meal plans, uh, they have various meal plans that you can choose from. Freshmen are required to have a meal plan. Upperclassmen, you're not. Um, but their meal plans range from about $5,300 um, to about $6,300. And that includes your flex dollars that you can spend um, in other restaurants and things like that. If you saw the um, apartment style 
homes that they have, campus living that they have, you are required to pay utilities. I um, mean, you pay it once a year and it ranges depending on which um, style apartment you choose from about $600 to $800 for the year. So that would be an additional expense. So if you have any questions about UNC, we're going to do Q&A afterwards. Um, so feel free to pop anything in the chat. Otherwise, up next, we have Miss Monique from California. Thanks, Chevy. Um, that's an amazing campus. <laughs> I always want to visit all your campuses in Colorado after these virtual tours. Um, perhaps one day I'll be able to do that. Today we're going to um, stay in Northern California. Uh, we're going to be um, touring um, Santa Clara University in um, sunny California. Enjoy. <laughs> Hi, my name is Bobby. Um, I'm a marketing major with a studio art minor here at Santa Clara University, and I'm originally from Bangkok, Thailand. Uh, so right now, we are standing in Lucas Hall, which is the home of our Levy School of Business. Um, it's one of the three colleges that we have here. About 25% of all Santa Clara students are business majors. Um, Within the college itself, we have seven majors ranging from accounting to marketing to management and so on. And then on top of that, we do have a host of um, minors that you can add on to your um, major. And what's actually really interesting about that is uh, a handful of those minors are not offered at the major level. So what that means is that you will often find a business major with a business minor tacked on top of that. So for example, I could be a marketing major with a business analytics minor on top of that and kind of tackle both the three theoretical marketing side and then also incorporate that data analysis too. Uh, so one thing that's really um, interesting and something I love about the business school here specifically is that um, almost all of our professors here are either actively working in their field of instruction or um, continuously conducting research within that field. So you're always going to have the um, most up-to-date information and theories and facts that they're instructing um, along with the theory that you get from the textbook itself. So um, you're really broadening your horizons there by getting as much information as you can kind of all in one go and they're all incredibly enthusiastic from my experience which has been such a great part of my um, kind of Santa Clara Bronco experience here as a student because our professors recognize that you are the future of their field and they want to arm you with all of the information possible with all the tools and knowledge in order for you to carry on that field for them in the future. <laughs> Hi there, my name's Nick. I'm a senior studying environmental studies in French in the College of Arts and Sciences. Right now we're in Dowd Hall, one of the most beautiful buildings on campus, and we'll talk a little bit about the College of Arts and Sciences. It's the largest school at Santa Clara for undergraduate students. About 54% of the undergraduate student body is in the school. We have over 30 majors and also over 30 minors. Um, some of those are overlapping, some of them are unique. And one of the great things about the College of Arts and Sciences is that it's primarily undergraduate focused. So you want research, you can easily interact with professors and figure out how to set that up. Um, average class size is about 23 students, so professors are on it and they are willing to help students and I've had incredible experiences with, in two weeks, some professors are on top of my name and know my name. Um, and Bobby can share a little bit more about her experience. Yeah, for sure. So um, as Nick said, we are in Dowd Hall right now, one of the most beautiful buildings on campus. It opened in 2016. Um, and like Nick said, arts is one of your core requirements at Santa Clara, but that doesn't mean it has to be a painting or drawing class. It can be a dance class. It can be a music class. You can learn to play an instrument. Um, one thing I loved was being able to take art classes. And um, in my experience here, I've been able to uh, woodwork, metalwork. I just completed a ceramics course, um, acrylic painting, drawing, all these really cool things. So there's just so many opportunities for students to explore the arts. Hi everyone, my name is Jake. I'm a senior at Santa Clara University where I'm majoring in mathematics with an emphasis in applied math. Uh, so right now we're standing in Hefe Bergen. This used to be the law library for quite a while, um, but the summer after my sophomore year, it was actually renovated to house the engineering school as we're kind of undergoing a big construction project here on campus. Um, so we received a big donation and we're undergoing a 300 million plus 
a stellar project on the Sobrato campus for discovery and innovation. Um, so that brand new STEM complex will be set to open in the fall of 2021. And until then, Hefe Bergen is the home for the engineering departments. Um, there's eight majors within the engineering school and eight minors as well. It's the smallest of the three schools at Santa Clara with around 20% of students being part of the School of Engineering. Um, one thing that's kind of unique about our engineering school is that all seniors within the engineering school have to do some kind of senior design project. So the first few years, you kind of get your general education, your math, your science, your physics. Um, then you kind of do some of your upper division coursework. And then senior year is really focused on doing an interdisciplinary project with other students in the engineering school, whether they're also in your major or working together with other different majors. Um, so that's a pretty cool opportunity afforded to our engineering students. Um, we also, as I mentioned, are undergoing a big project for new facilities for engineering students. So there's a lot of great lab spaces that we've kind of ramped up here on campus. And the brand new Sobrato campus for discovery and innovation is going to have a lot of lab spaces, classrooms, and facilities for students to use. Um, the last thing I'll touch on really quick is we're in a pretty unique part of the country to have an engineering school right around the corner from Santa Clara is Google, Apple, Adobe, Cisco, Tesla, SpaceX. Um, so these are companies that are offering opportunities for our students to have internships and postgraduate opportunities in computer engineering, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so being close to all these companies and having professors that have relationships with people that are working at all these companies in Silicon Valley and beyond is a pretty awesome opportunity and one that a lot of Santa Clara engineering students make the most of. Hello everyone, my name is Elena. I am currently a junior here studying communications and minoring in entrepreneurship. I was born in Brazil, raised in Texas, and about three years ago my family immigrated to Buenos Aires, Argentina. So today, I'm going to be talking about religion here on campus. But before I begin to talk about religion on campus, I would like to take a second to acknowledge the Ohlone Native American tribe, native to the Bay Area, whose history is critical to our campus and whose lands we stand to talk about religion on campus. As you can see, we are here in the Mission Gardens, one of the most beautiful places at Santa Clara University. Uh, we are a Jesuit university, so what does that mean? That means that our courses um, try to teach the student as a whole. So uh, that being said, we do have three mandatory religion classes that you have to take uh, during your time here at Santa Clara, but don't fret, those religion classes vary, and they can vary from Christian in theology, um, theology of marriage, theology of death. I just took a class called Witches, Saints, and Heretics, which was awesome. So there's a, a variety. Only about 50% of our student body here is Catholic. The other half um, are a diverse of different religions and spiritualities. We do have mass here every day, if that is something that you want to pursue. Uh, and we do have mass on Sundays. And the nine o'clock at night is the mass that is 100% student run and student-led which is awesome so yes here at Santa Clara theology is a big part of our life but by no means do you have to be Catholic to be here hello everyone and welcome to Benson Memorial Center our main dining hall here on campus Benson was recently renovated about 18 months ago and has a variety of different foods that you can choose from. From Mediterranean to sushi bar to sandwiches and Asian food, there's a lot of different choices, which is awesome. Also, something to note is that if you do have an allergy, uh, Bon Appetit, our caterer, does a really good job of making sure that there are options for you, whether you be vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, soy-free, nut-free, there are options. Uh, besides Benson, we have three cafes throughout campus that you can buy coffee from and also buy some sandwiches and some prepackaged salads. Downstairs in the basement, we have a cellar market, which acts kind of like a super, like a little mini market, I guess, um, where you can also buy snacks and foods. Uh, something else to note is that Benson is home to a variety of clubs and organizations here on campus. Yeah, and so in that lower level of Benson, where the cellar is located, also, like Elena said, offices for a lot of
of the student clubs and organizations, of which there are many at Santa Clara. Um, so in the lower level Benson, you're going to find the offices for everything ranging from the student newspaper, the student radio station, the Rainbow Resource Center. Uh, it also houses the office for Into the Wild, which is one of our most popular clubs here on campus. Into the Wild does backpacking trips in local nature spots around the Bay Area and beyond, so they might take students to Tahoe skiing over the weekend or just go on a day hike in Saratoga. Um, the great thing about clubs and activities at Santa Clara is there's pretty much a way for you to get involved in whatever you want to get involved in. If you're interested in student government, you can join Associated Student Government. If you're interested in chess, you can join the chess club. Uh, we also have big campus-wide events put on by our activities programming board. Um, so this is an organization that's run by students that plans fun events for students to do on campus. Everything ranging from a couple big concerts each year with artists as big as Vince Staples, uh, Quinn XCII, or Quinn 92, I always forget which it is. Um, but then they also have petting zoos during finals week that they bring here on campus. They have Bronco buses up to Warriors games and different concerts in Oakland and San Francisco. So there are a lot of fun things to do both on and off campus, put on by APB and kind of just organized by students as well. Hey everyone, so right now we're walking into one of Santa Clara's nine residence hall, halls. This is, the building name is Graham Hall. And then the RLC name, we don't call them dorms, we call them Residential Learning Communities, RLC, is Alpha. And the focus is integrity, innovation, and impact. And so with that, you're going to be taking a first a class with your first year students, with students in your residence hall. So that just means that you get to know these students extremely well. It's a segue into community on campus. And then the class that you're taking is supposed to focus on that theme. So for Graham, as we said before, innovation, integrity, and impact, that's kind of what your class would be about. So at Santa Clara, we put a lot of emphasis on this community aspect of, re of, of a residence hall and of living. So you're gonna be living with students, going to class with them, really getting to know them, up late at night for an assignment, maybe eating lunch, breakfast, dinner, whatever it might be. And this, for me, was my first group on campus, and it segued my segue into college was made so much better. I still keep in touch with students to this day. And so we're going to go walk into one of the residence halls. This Graham, Graham residence hall is a mini suite style. So that's one of our three options, kind of the middle ground. We have our standard double, mini suite, and then full suite. And then what we also have, which is extremely um, incredible uh, resource for students, we have community facilitators. So those are, they're called CFs, students who go through extensive training to be a resource for students. And then we have spirituality facilitators. They're all in charge of putting on events in the residence hall. Graham has an Olympics event, things like that. Now we get to finally see where students spend their time. This is a mini suite. So Graham Hall is first years and sophomores. Many people walk in here and they're like, oh my goodness, this is huge. Which, it is a sizable room, but it's also for first years and sophomores, not for juniors and seniors. So with that, you have your beds, you have your desks, um, a vanity, and then you have your own bathroom with, on the other side is a room, a mini suite of the same configuration. So you share a shower, bathroom with the other students on the other side. And so um, you got a lot of space and these are super, super nice. Um, but then this is the middle ground. So we have that standard double, which is a little bit smaller than this. That's where I lived my first year. And then we have a full suite, which is a little bit bigger. So just so you know what you're looking at when it, in regards to the style of living with each residence hall, Graham is your mini suite, Finn is a mini suite, and then on West Campus Housing we have Swig, Dunn, McLaughlin, Walsh, those are standard doubles. Campisi and San Filippo are both standard doubles. Sobrado as well as um, Casa, those are both your full suite. So some of those have kitchens, um, that gives you a little bit more room, and that's the breakdown of all the housing that we have. And that was Santa Clara University. Um, it's considered one of the really beautiful campuses out here in California. I mean, there are a few, but this was considered like one of the most beautiful campuses in this part of California. Um, it's a private university and it's co-ed. It's about on a, about 106 campuses, uh, 106 acres, um, and it is in the city of Santa Clara. So the closest um, Cities close to that are metropolitan areas would be San Francisco and San Jose. I think they kind of mentioned that a little bit as they talked about um, Google and all the other Silicon Valley uh, tech firms. Um, it's a, considered a small university, so about 5,500 undergraduate students, where 50% of them are women. And over half of the students live on campus. It sounds like, looks like they have a lot of amazing different options for dorm styles, suite styles, mini styles, et cetera. And our freshmen are given um, priority for housing. 
the admissions rate for um, Santa Clara University is about 54% with an average GPA of um, 3.69. And then um, middle SAT scores are between 1270 and 1440 or ACTs between 28 and 32. It does run on a quarter system and it has over 50 majors. Most popular are business, marketing, engineering, and the social sciences. And they offer like cooperative work study programs, student design majors, double majors, honors programs. They talk a lot about internships the last tour I went on and how easy it is to actually connect with faculty to help, um, you know, your, with your opportunities and in getting internships. Um, they also offer summer sessions and they are NCAA Division I uh, sports team and um, their mascot is the Broncos. So they also have drama, theater, radio station, student newspaper, and for those asking, they have Army ROTC on campus and Air Force ROTC off campus. Submission so requirements um, for the class of 2021 is still the academic coursework, um, three years of history of social sciences, three to four years of math, and two to four years of language. So I'd like to see a lot of language if you have more than um, two to three years is great. Um, part of the application process is you actually have to choose the school you'd like to be part of. So either the College of Arts and Sciences, the School of Business, or the School of Engineering. Largest being, and I think they mentioned this, is the College of Arts and Science. So probably about a little over 50% of the students are in there. And then um, the smallest is School of Engineering at about 20%. So. Um, Santa Clara University has adopted for the class of 21 and 2022 a test optional policy. So um, basically, um, you're not going to be penalized or disadvantaged for not submitting your um, your test scores. If you have them, you know, of course, submit them. But um, if you don't have them, like, don't stress out about it. Um, they do the, use the Common App uh, for the for the application, and they do have two early decision. Um, options, decision, early decision one and two, which are considered binding, and then the early action, which is non-binding, and they have regular decisions. So basically the application kind of runs from October all the way through January. Um, being a private small uh, Jesuit school, um, the tuition, uh, just for tuition alone is about a little over $50,000 and with room and board, it's over, a little over 70,000. Um, but they do meet at least 74% of the, um, the need um, for financial aid. And um, one thing I'd like to say, one extra thing I'd like to say about uh, Santa Clara University is on my last visit there, they were building this that whole new um, Sobrato Center, which is going to be huge and amazing. And um, I did eat their food on the campus and it was really good. I had a big old poke bowl and it was delicious. So that's all I want to say about university, yeah. Santa Clara University. And I'm going to pass it on to uh, Tamika in Alexandria. Hello, I am Tamika, the, the director of the College Place Alexandria, and I'm excited um, to give you an opportunity to tour Howard University. Um, I'll talk at the end about, you know, different stats about the school, this tuition, um, their application requirements, and just some fun facts that you may want to know about Howard University. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to Howard University. The Mecca. Established in 1867 in the nation's capital, Howard University is ranked as one of the top 100 research institutions in the country. Home to the mighty bison, there are more than 9,000 undergraduate, graduate, and professional students. The university boasts 120 areas of study across 13 schools and colleges and is renowned for providing an exceptional educational experience in health sciences, business and communications, fine arts, law, engineering and architecture, among others. Birthed during an era of educational disparity, Howard has many groundbreaking firsts and continues to develop solutions to impact the African diaspora. 
Through traditional and innovative academic programs, the university remains a beacon of light for social justice. Howard's model holds very true today. Excellence and truth in service. Before we get started, The Yard, also known as the Upper Quadrangle, is one of the most iconic and photographed destinations on campus. As the central green space between several key buildings, the energy felt on the Yard is unmatched. Students often convene on the Yard for informal gatherings, to hang out, or read a book. You might even catch an impromptu step show by one of the Greek organizations on campus. Throughout the school year, the Yard transforms into a world-class outdoor event venue and meeting spot. From Yard Fest performances during homecoming to the annual commencement exercises, the Yard is a beloved space on campus for all bison to enjoy. The Carnegie Hall building was the original home to the university's first library collection prior to the construction of the Founders Library. Donated by Still Company owner and philanthropist Andrew Carnegie, the building today is the home of the Office of Undergraduate Studies, which assists students in academic planning, advising, tutoring, scholar development, and career services. Howard University is proud to have a four-year graduation rate above the national average. The Office of Undergraduate Studies plays a key role in this success by offering all Howard students the academic support services and programs necessary to flourish and graduate on time. Founders Library is a beacon of intellectual research and study of the African American experience. As one of the most expansive libraries on an HBCU campus, it is named in honor of the 17 men who founded the institution. This iconic landmark was designated in 2016 as a national treasure by the National Trust for Historic Preservation. Students utilize its various traditional and electronic resources and meeting spaces to enhance their college learning experience. Founders Library is also home to the Moreland Spin Garden Research Center, which is recognized as one of the world's largest and most comprehensive repositories for the history and culture of people of African descent in Africa, the Americas, and other parts of the world. Welcome to the Blackburn University Center, where the recreational and learning experiences of the entire Bison community merge in leisure, dining, lounging, and cultural activities. Blackburn consists of a combination of flexible event space areas, including a ballroom, auditorium, meeting rooms, terraces, and dining services. The amenities are used by students, faculty, and university organizations year-round. Students also enjoy several dining options, like the Punch-Out Cafe, which is a favorite destination to catch up with friends over a hot meal. Since Howard's inception, the arts have been celebrated as a form of cultural, political, and personal expression. Home to the Department of Fine Arts and the Howard University Gallery of Art, Lulu Ver Childers Hall is named after the influential faculty member who once served as a director of music from 1905 to 1942. Childers and early faculty helped to shape the division into what it is today, a network of highly competitive programs, boasting a strong track record of cultivating careers in the arts, from musicians to dancers to graphic artists. Established in 1928, the Gallery of Art showcases an extensive collection of works from across the world with regularly revolving exhibitions. Ira Aldrich Theater is home to the Department of Theater Arts. This is where Howard University's most notable alumni, from stage and screen, learn their craft before heading to Hollywood. From Felicia Rashad and Debbie Allen, to Chadwick Boseman and Taraji P. Henson. Named after classic American and British actor Ira Aldridge, the first black actor to play many of William Shakespeare's leading roles. The 300-seat theater is used for performances and as an active classroom setting for students. Each season, the department presents classical and contemporary plays that provides artistic enrichment and entertainment, as well as forums for ideas and discussions. Crampton Auditorium is a premier venue for performances and symposiums on Howard's campus. World-class leaders in politics, business, and entertainment have graced the stage as keynote speakers and panelists. 
Notable past Crampton performances include the National Symphony Orchestra and Grammy Award winning rapper Common. It is not uncommon for a filmmaker like Jordan Pill to stop by with his cast to screen his new film and host a panel Q&A, or for a top company like Netflix to premiere Beyonce's latest documentary. Crampton Auditorium also hosts Howard University's Andrew Rankin Memorial Chapel Services, where the internationally known Howard Gospel Choir performs. Green Stadium is the home of Bison football, soccer, and lacrosse, where fans pack 10,000 seats to cheer our teams to victory. Bison Athletics offers 21 NCAA Division I teams. Its primary membership is in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, MEAC, plus additional affiliations with four other conferences. Our student athletes pursue excellence in the classroom, on the field of play, and in the community. As a premier academic institution, we are consistently recognized for the high graduation success rate of our athletes. The Howard University Department of Athletics seeks to attract and cultivate student athletes who reflect Howard's core mission to develop leaders who will change the world. The John Burr Building for Physical Education is not your ordinary gymnasium. It's where leadership, integrity, discipline, sportsmanship, and teamwork manifest. Burr Gym serves as the venue for bison basketball games, volleyball matches, swim meets, and many other sporting events. It also houses a heated swimming pool, cardio equipment room, multiple weight rooms, and exercise studios. The gym, dedicated on October 25, 1974, was named in honor of John H. Burr, who served as professor of physical education at Howard from 1923 to 1958. With dynamic academic departments, esteemed faculty, and award-winning programs, the experience of students in the School of Business at Howard is a global experience that extends beyond the classroom. Ranked as one of the top business programs in the nation, it offers in-depth classroom instruction, real-world experience, expert speakers, access to global industry leaders, and a commitment to research and publication. Students have the option to take advantage of free consulting workshops at the Small Business Development Center, pursue graduate work in one of the top-ranked MBA programs, or gain work experience and training as international business consultants in other countries through the Global Trilateral Certificate Program. There's something for everyone. Home to some of the most rigorous academic programs offered at Howard University, the Mackey Architecture Building is headquarters for the many disciplines of the College of Engineering and Architecture. The college boasts an impressive selection of undergraduate, graduate, and doctoral programs, including the five-year Master of Architecture professional degree. Students here are engaged in large-scale interdisciplinary research in areas such as environmental and water quality, sustainable architecture, and cybersecurity. They also have access to a variety of research centers and labs, including the Howard University Transportation Research Center and the Software Engineering Laboratory. The Lower Quadrangle, better known as the Valley, is a beautiful green open lawn area surrounded by various science buildings, including biology, chemistry, physics, and pharmacy. If you're taking an introductory science class, you may visit the Lower Quad frequently for class and lab. In the warm months, the energy is even more vibrant in the Valley, where you'll find students taking a break from classes or talking to friends. With Howard being the birthplace for five of the Divine Nine Greek Letter organizations, the Valley also features landmarks dedicated to those organizations, which includes Alpha Kappa Alpha, Omega Psi Phi, Delta Sigma Theta, Phi Beta Sigma, and Zeta Phi Beta. College Hall South, a top housing option for students, offers a convenient location and well-appointed meticulous rooms. In close proximity to many academic and social activities, College Hall South provides students with access to quiet study areas, a computer lab, game room, laundry facilities, and high-speed wireless internet. 
It welcomed the first set of students a few years ago, and since then has continued to afford students a collegial space to live, learn, and socialize. The Lewis Stokes Health Sciences Library provides students and faculty with a state-of-the-art library that includes individual study areas, common spaces for collaboration, as well as meeting and conference rooms fully equipped to stream presentations and discussions. The variety of spaces throughout the library were designed to accommodate every need, foster collaboration, and enhance the learning experience. While available to all students, the Lewis Stokes Library is a premier information resource for medical, dental, pharmacy, nursing, and allied health science students. The library is affiliated with the Medical Library Association and the Association of Academic Health Sciences Libraries. It offers online access to high-quality digital assets, including 6,056 electronic journals, 89,467 ebooks, and 61 fee-based databases. The 81,000 square feet interdisciplinary research building, known as the IRB, is home to Howard's core science and research facilities. The state-of-the-art facility houses interdisciplinary research conducted by teams that comprises scientists, engineers, and biomedical researchers from various departments. On any given day, you can find teams working on biomedical imaging, computational biology and bioinformatics, nanotechnology, and stem cell cancer and gene array studies, to name a few. The IRB is where 21st century academic research comes to life. The Howard University Bookstore is a popular hub on campus, located on the Georgia Avenue corridor near the Interdisciplinary Research Building. It is a place to go for all your Howard paraphernalia, gifts, textbooks, and technology needs. The bookstore is a frequent destination for book signings and events featuring celebrities, Howard alumni, prominent public figures, and faculty. Every time you visit, there's something new, so visit often. The Information Lab, better known as the iLab, is where Howard students come to access a variety of technology resources. The iLab houses 100 plus workstations, including Macs, PCs, and Unix-based machines that offer access to everything from Adobe Creative Suite to Mathematica and SAS. Students and faculty can reserve one of the mini labs for small group study, or may find that one of their classes is being held in one of the larger labs. During exam periods, the iLab is open 24 hours and is a go-to destination for students to prepare for exams or collaborate with classmates on projects. Welcome to Howard Plaza Towers East and West, a premier residential choice for students. The two buildings are home to more than 700 well-appointed residential units, offering a variety of room types and layouts, ranging from shared efficiencies to four bedroom plans. The open layouts provide a light-filled and contemporary aesthetic. The in-suite kitchens and bathrooms offer modernized appliances, updated finishes, and walk-in showers. Community amenities include a fitness room, convenience store, controlled access, and much more. The towers represent Howard's commitment to provide students with housing accommodations that are modern, conveniently located to campus, and features the latest technology and amenities. And that is Howard University. So I don't know if they, they actually spelled this out at the beginning of the, of the tour, but Howard is a historically black college and university and known as HBCU. It was founded in 1867 and it is here in the District of Columbia in DC. I think I could drive to the campus in less than seven minutes. I'll time it one day. Um, it is the only HBCU to be ranked in the top 100 of the US News and World Report for the best colleges list. Um, they have a 36% acceptance rate and a 59% graduation rate. Um, more information, students pursue studies in more than 130 areas within the university's 13 schools and colleges. Um, they have schools in the arts and sciences, business, communications, dentistry, divinity, education, engineering, 
architecture and computer sciences, a graduate school, law, medicine, nursing, and allied health sciences, pharmacy, and social work. And the university offers master's and doctoral professional joint degrees as well as undergraduate programs. Um, in total, the, the school has about 9,600 students. That includes both the undergraduate, graduate, and professional student populations that uh, come from 45 of the United States and nine other countries. So to apply to um, Howard University, they are a Common App School. It's a $45 application fee. Their early decision deadline is November the 1st, as well as their early action deadline is November the 1st as well. Their regular, regular decision deadline is February the 15th. To apply, they need to see a copy of your high school transcript, um, and you have to have shown that you were able to take four years of English, three years of math, that's algebra one, algebra two, and geometry. And this is the bare minimum. They, they said that they suggested you take more, but these are the minimum requirements two years of social science, <laughs> excuse me, two years of laboratory sciences, that's biology and chemistry, and then two years of, at least two years of one foreign language. Um, the average GPA for entering freshman last year was a 3.6 GPA. They also require SAT and ACT scores. There isn't a notice yet about um, students that, are, that will be applying for the 2021 um, school year, whether or not they're going to make your test optional, but as it stands, they require SAT and ACT scores. The average SAT score for entering freshman last year was a 1210, and the average ACT score for entering freshman last year was 25. They also require a letter of recommendation from a high school teacher, as well as a letter of recommendation from your high school counselor. And you also have the option of submitting um, an optional writing supplement. Um, is of your choosing. The cost of tuition and fees at Howard University is, with direct fees, including room and board, is about $42,920. Be mindful that Howard is a private school because the District of Columbia has no statehood. So all colleges and universities in D.C. are private schools. <coughs> Excuse me. The indirect total, including direct and indirect costs for Howard, is $47,080. Um, the cost of room and board is $14,180. And that is Howard University. Um, thank you to everyone who has joined us this summer to uh, take advantage of the virtual tours. I know we've definitely learned a lot about these schools that exist in the different states. I really enjoyed um, seeing all these different schools and I'm really jealous of Chevy. I was born in California, but I'm really jealous of Chevy and the beautiful campuses in Colorado. Um, we'll hang around for questions. We will hang around for questions, but um, we really want to thank you guys for taking the opportunity to join us. We hope it was useful information for you. Um, and, you know, we'll keep you guys posted if we decide to continue this later on in the fall. But right now we want school to kind of get some momentum going. Um, so we'll hang around for questions. But if you're not interested in any questions, thanks so much for joining us and have a great afternoon. Ooh, the box. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, so Chevy. Yes. You know, are we going to do a TCP um, exchange program? <laughs> <laughs> you guys trying to come to Colorado? Just wondering. I mean, I've been to Colorado twice in life, and it was both times. One, well, we were Denver and Colorado Springs. I have a cousin there. But I didn't see the beautiful campuses. That's what I didn't They're see. They're really beautiful. But I was looking at um, you know, that tower over there at Howard. It's just like, <laughs> I was like, wow, it's an apartment complex over there. It's beautiful. And it is. It really is. Um, I went in one time. Um, I have a, go a godchild in Philadelphia, and she was going to Howard. And I went to move her in. And I just got lost trying to find the exit. Um, 
and each floor has a different room like room set up plan so some are like mm-hmm. double some are apartment style so it's um it's not like in some campuses where they have like a freshman dorm and then they have you know upperclassmen is mixed um, oh. in all their dorms so um i definitely said stay out of trouble <laughs> when i moved her in when i moved her in yeah, <laughs> You're right, Jan. We all want to go there. Mm-hmm. I really, I want, every time I see one of your campuses, I'm like, wow, it's so beautiful. I think I've commented that on every campus that you said that you've shown that you've uh, shared with us, Chevy. They're stunning. I mean, you know, something about those Rocky Mountains and being in those plains, it's just so, mm-hmm. Picturesque. you know, it's, yeah. yeah, beautiful. We were driving back this, this, uh, yesterday from, south dakota and when we were driving i'm just like wow look at this this is really mm-hmm. like pretty but so yeah. all the campuses even with unc that's one of the older ones but they still do a really good job and their newer buildings are really amazing yeah we used yeah. to do um tamika well no you too monique i know you're um you guys know about college summit mm-hmm. so when we did um our college summit peer peer leader um workshops we would do them at unc so we would host the summer workshops oh. there so we got to like stay in the dorms and you know that was that was our camp does it snow over there yes it snows so it's so funny i was, I was asking this, is it snowy <laughs> i think it's so deceitful when they're like it's 320 days of sun and i'm like that's true but it'll be sunny outside and you walk outside and it's like four degrees and you're like whoa i wasn't expecting this this is way too cold but no it is it's always sunny um, but it, it's cold in the winter time. And well, I mean, they said it was like 360 days of sunshine. I'm like, that's the whole year, <laughs> something, some, something like yeah, that. Like yeah, like yeah, 320. Yeah, like yeah. I'm like, that's the whole year. It's always right, sunny. Yeah, it's always sunny. It's so funny. People are always like, "Isn't it so nice outside?" And then I'm like, the angry person. I'm like, no, because I want it to be warm, and I go outside, and then it's like freezing. But it's sunny. Minutes. Right, but it's sunny. sunny. That makes it a little bit excusable. You're like, it's so sunny. Not the biggest fan of deceitful sun. I'd rather it show me its true colors and what it really is. (laughs) No, I remember when we were when I was in South Africa and the sun. I remember falling in love with the sun because it's so big. I don't. I never noticed how big the sun was until I was there. I would be outside with a coat on because it's 40 degrees and just standing out like this. So when I went in the um, went in my friend's apartment one day, she goes, "You have a serious tan," and I'm like, "Oh, so it works even with the coat on?" Like I was, it was just one of those eureka moments for me. It was, it was very slow. I was like, "Wait, so I still tan even though it's not hot outside? It was the sun." Oh, great. So yeah. Well, maybe one of these years we can do a, a meeting over in Colorado, and you could take us out to one of your campuses. Right. That would be so fun. I yeah. they gave us a couple of days I mean they gave us a couple of days we could see them because Greeley and Fort Collins is not too too far from each other so we could see like UNC and like CSU yeah that would be so wonderful like see two campuses that would be so yeah. amazing I'm yeah. always there yeah I love going on campus tours yeah one thing I forgot to mention about Howard, I mean, people know this is, that it's in DC, but it's it's right on the Metro line. So you can get literally anywhere in nice. the district, um, in the district and in cer- certain parts of Maryland and Virginia um, mm-hmm. from the campus. Kids, you'll, you'll run into ca- Howard kids everywhere um, because one, they live everywhere. And then two, um, they, take, they take advantage of the location. So in internships and fellowships and... <laughs> opportunities like that so you see um you see them all over the place yeah well ladies right i'm like so who's all right us? it's been a good run it's been a great run it has been i guess these Folks. And I'm already thinking about schools if we start, decide to do it in the fall. If we do, you know, like one a month, I'm already thinking maybe I'll throw UC Berkeley in there. There you go. Go for it. 